from 3, 1, we know how to graph a line now, and we've talked a lot about the y-intercept. Now we're going to be looking again at the y-intercept, but also at any x-intercepts that might happen. So in 3.1, we graphed linear equations in the form ax plus biy equals c. By first solving for y, to find an equivalent equation in the form y equals mx plus b. Another convenient way to graph that standard equation is to use the intercepts. So when it's in that form, it's quicker to be able to graph using intercepts instead of solving for y and then looking at plugging in points and plotting them. So that first graph that you have in front of you, I want you to note where the x and the y intercepts occur. So the y intercept, where does it cross the y axis? At what point? 0, 4. And where does it cross the x intercept? The x axis, excuse me. Where is the x intercept happening? Minus 2, 0. So to solve for intercepts, the y-intercept always has that form 0, not moving left and right at all, only moving up and down, some constant. The x-intercept is always some constant 0, because it moves left and right and doesn't move up and down at all. So to find the y-intercept, let x be 0, solve for y. To solve for the other one, to solve for the x-intercept, let y be 0, and solve for x. So we always do the opposite. So that first graph, consider that equation. We want to find the intercepts, then graph the equation using the intercepts. 4x plus 3y equals 12. So we're not solving for y. We are finding the intercepts. So how do we get the x-intercept? So I'm trying to figure out when y is 0, when I'm restricted not to move up and down, what is my x value? So we'll plug in y for 0, 0 for y, and see what comes out. So 0 times 3, that term is going to be gone. I'm left with 4x is equal to 12. So that tells me x is equal to 3. So x-intercept, again, occurs at a point, not a random constant 3. So what is it going through? What does our coordinate pair look like? 3, I plugged in for x. 0, I got 4y. So that's one intercept. Now to solve for the y-intercept. So now I'm restricting, can't move left and right at all. x has to be 0. What do I get out for y? Alright, first term is gone. I'm looking at 3y equals 12. If I divide by 3, y is equal to 4. So where is our y-intercept occurring at? What point? I plugged in 0 and got out 4. So these two points are our intercepts, and we can use those to graph our equation, see what it looks like. So let's plot those. On the plane, I'm looking at 3, 1, 2, 3, 0. So that was our x-intercept. The other one... 0, 4. So not moving left and right, up 1, 2, 3, 4. So I've got a pretty good idea of what the line looks like. Again, draw those arrows because it's continuing on for forever. So take the next equation. Take the try. Find the intercepts of that equation, then graph them using those intercepts. So again, we're not solving for y in this case, we're solving for the intercepts. So what is the x-intercept looking like? When I plug in y, 0 for y, that term is gone. At 2x is equal to 6, so x is equal to 3. So my point goes through 3, and I plugged in y was 0. All right, y-intercept, where did that one happen? We set x equal to 0, so that term is gone. We're left with y is equal to 2. So again, I plugged in 0 for x, got out 2 for y. So let's plot, see what it looks like. So 3, 1, 2, 3, 0, x-intercept, y happened at 2. All right. Draw a picture of what it looks like. Draw the lines, give me the little arrows. Tell me it's going on 
for forever. So graphs of equations of the type y equals mx. So our y-intercept here is zero. It's always going to pass through the origin or zero, zero. So the x and the y-intercepts happen at zero, zero. So we're going to graph y equals 3x and you'll be able to see where's my y-intercept happening at? Zero, zero through the origin. And it's also where the x-intercept is happening. So let's plot some points. X value, y value, what does it look like as a point? So I like 0, and I'm going to plug in minus 2 and positive 3. Small, so it'll fit nice on my grid. So when I plug in 0 for x, I get out 0 for y. We knew it was going to go through the origin. If I plug in minus 2, I get minus 6 out. So it'll go through that point. If I plug in 3, I'll get 9. So let's plot. 0, 0 through the origin, minus 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, minus 6, 3, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The grid's not large enough, but we can pretend. Boop, boop, there we go. Draw on the line. Hopefully yours is more accurate than mine. Hey, look, now I'm accurate. Okay, <laughs> so x-intercept, also at 0, 0. y-intercept, also at 0, 0. Because this is the only point at which it's crossing both of those axes. All right, graph on the next page. y equals negative 2 thirds x. And think to yourself, what values of x are going to be nice to plug in and evaluate to plot points? So multiples of 3 are going to be nice to plug in. And it's also going to go through the origin, because when I plug in 0 for x, I get out 0 for y. Easy point. And again, I'm going to pick 3 minus 3, just because it's going to be nice. So if I plug in positive 3, what did you get out? Minus 2. And when we plug in minus 3, we get out positive 2. So it's going to go through the origin. That's both our x and y intercept. And it's going to go through 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. So it's decreasing left to right, which we expected because that number is negative on the front of x. And the y-intercept and the x-intercept goes through the origin, 0, 0. All right. Looking at the next one, how is he different than what we've seen so far? I don't have another variable involved. I only have one. So we want to figure out, what kind of line am I going to be looking at? So let's just plug in some values, because we're pretty comfortable with those, plotting in that way. I'm going to pick 0, minus 2, and plus 3. So when I plug in 0 for x, what do I get out for y? 3. When I plug in minus 2 for x, what do I get out for y? 3. When I plug in 3 for x, what do I get out for y? 3. You see the pattern? Regardless of what we're plugging in for x, we always get out 3 for y. So regardless of x, y is 3. So again, if I plug in 0 for x, I get out 3 for y. If I plug in minus 2 for x, I get out 3 for y. If I plug in positive 3, positive 3. So we're looking at what kind of a line here? Horizontal at 3. Okay, so another way that I like to think about these, because I have a hard time remembering, is this vertical or is this horizontal? So if I have y as my variable involved, am I going to have a y-intercept or an x-intercept? So I should have a y. So it's going to have to cross my y-axis. If it's crossing that, it means it has to be going which way? Horizontal, because y has to be equal to 3 everywhere. Okay, so the next one, x equals 2. What do you think it's going to look like then? Again, plot some points just to lock it in. And in this case, I'm going to choose values for 
y. When I plug in 2 for y, what do I get out for x? 2. Okay, when I plug in minus 1 for y, what do I get out for x? 2. When I plug in 0 for y, what do I get out for x? 2. So regardless of y in this case, x is always 2. So again, am I going to have an x-intercept or a y-intercept? I'm going to have an x, so that means it has to cross the x-axis somehow. It's going to be vertical, specifically at 2. And we can double check with our points. Is 2, 0 on there? Yep. Is 2, 2 on there? Yep. Is 2, minus 1 on there? Yes. All of those points are present. So the graph y equals b is a horizontal line. Because again, we have a y-intercept. It has to cross that axis somewhere along there. X equals A is a vertical line, because again, I have an x-intercept. It has to cross somewhere along here. So the y-intercept always has the form what? For a horizontal line, the y-intercept is 0, whatever constant is on there. Because my y-intercept at this point was what? 0, 3, regardless of what I plugged in for x, y came out to be 3. And for the vertical case, where is the x-intercept happening at? In this case, it was 2, 0, whatever constant we're looking at, 0. All right. So on the same axis below, graph both y equals minus 2 and x equal to 5. And label them so we can talk about the differences. So as I'm graphing y equals minus 2, is it going to be vertical or horizontal? That's the first question we need to ask. So I'm going to have a y-intercept since y is involved. So I need to cross the y-axis. It's going to be horizontal at minus 2. So down here, horizontal line, y equals minus 2. X equal to 5, I have an x-intercept involved, so it's going to have to be vertical, crossing that guy, specifically at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. X equal to 5. And you have to label them both if you're graphing more than one uh, line on a pair of axes. Okay. So, the last uh, page and a half just sums up what we've covered today. Graphing linear equations. What is it looking like? So again, number one, we have the horizontal and the vertical lines based on if we have an x-intercept or a y-intercept. Easiest way to remember that guy. If we have an equation in that form y equals mx, so we don't have an explicit y-intercept, it's zero, it's going to go through the origin. Okay. If we have that form y equals mx plus b, we can pluck off the y-intercept happens, the constant on the back. We can plot other points, see what the graph looks like. So the fourth part is something we haven't talked about. If I'm graphing and finding the intercepts, so looking at that very last picture, my x and y-intercepts are really close together around the origin. So when I go to draw that line, if I'm just using those two points, the ends aren't going to be very accurate. So we also need to plot a few more um, farther away from the origin if the intercepts are close to each other. That's just what number four is telling you. So you want your line to be as accurate as possible.